Hi guys, Chris Rollins here from Allwood Audubon and we're painting a river otter today in watercolor. Now the first thing we're going to do is sketch it out and once we have our sketch the way we like it we're going to take our pencil and rub the graphite all over the back of it and then place our picture on top of our paper and then go back over our lines to transfer the picture and once we do that we can start painting so grab yourself a pencil and by the way if you don't have watercolors you can do this with color pencil you can do it in crayon whatever you have so grab yourself a number two pencil regular pencil and we'll begin All right, we're back. Now, a couple things you're going to need if we're going to watercolor. And like I said, if you want to, you could color pencil this. You could put color in crayon. You can do whatever you want. But we're going to do watercolor. Uh, first thing we're going to need, you want some paper towels. So if you need to clean up some of your paper, your watercolor, you can do that. So we've got that. I have two cups for water. One to rinse my brush when it's dirty right away and the second one after the brush is cleaned to just clean it even more if need be. That's when I'm doing a lot of my real detailed work. You might just need one but I always have two. Your brushes. Now I have lots and lots of different brushes. Uh, some of them are a little more expensive than others, but we're going to just use a simple brush. And here again is a brush, uh, just a little sapphire brush. You can you can get a lot of these at Hobby Lobby or Dick Blick, some of the other art places. They're they're not expensive. You can get them for three or four bucks, all the way up to a hundred dollars. But uh, this is only about ten dollars. And then we're going to need our watercolors. Now here again, you can get really fancy watercolors that are expensive or not. These are just Master Touch watercolors. They're not expensive. Uh, you can get these at Hobby Lobby or Dick Blick. But there's lots and lots of different colors uh, to it. And they're, they're pretty nice colors. So I use these for a lot of my simplified stuff. Um, and you can get into more expensive watercolors for other things, but right now these work just great. You can even get watercolors at, at Walmart or uh, other stores, Target, I'm sure, places like that. So uh, don't worry about getting fancy stuff, just have fun. And we're going to make this otter. Yeah, I'm going to get me a paper towel. Got my little Altoid up here, so this can be a little higher, so I'm not blocking it off. Now I'm going to hold my watercolor. Normally I don't, but I want to keep them over here. And I'm going to grab some of my brown. And I'm just going to go around the edges. You don't want your watercolor saturated. You want your brush saturated. We just want to go around the edge just a little bit. And here again, we can add color to it as we go on. But I'm going to get sort of the shadowed area, the darker areas first. So I'm going to get that in. Get him shadowed here. Maybe dab a little, little bit, give the idea of fur. Put a little bit on his nose. A little darker right here around the middle. make this arm nice and dark. And right 
right under here. Now I want the bottom here a little darker than the top so I'm going to take just a little bit of water and put on my brush and I'm going to put just some water up here at the top of his arm and watch this it's going to lighten up the top and it's going to pull the paint down lower. I'm going to clean my brush out a little bit dry it off a little water with a little paper towel I'm going to pull you guys see how it's making it lighter on the top? Pull that down even more. Bring that in. And out of my line a little bit. Just scoop it in. There we go. Because I want the light coming from the top. So I want it's going to be a little darker down at the bottom. I'm going to let those little parts that pool up, if the watercolor pools, I want it to pool down below to create some of that shadow. And I'll do the same with this arm. I'm going to start where I should have in the first place. I'll start getting the shadow right here. I'm going to put more of it on this side because this side is going to have more of the shadows. And you can see I'm just putting it in little spots here and there. That's where I want my shadows to be. I'll put a little bit right here. A little more water on that one. I don't want to go into the arm yet. I'm going to keep that part to stick out. Right here. Now while that's drying, I'm going to smooth out some of those lines. As you make lines with your watercolor paper, it'll start to create other lines. And it'll darken up certain spots. So as you can see, watch this right up here I can make it a little darker and I have darkened lights in with my watercolor. It gives you sort of that look of fur. Put a little more of this around his eye. I want his eyes to be nice and dark to stick out. And so far I've only used one of my browns. And you can see the nice thing with watercolor it's still a little wet. I can make all different colors. I want that in the eye. All different darks and lights just from one of my colors. Same color, same brown. I'm using the same brown for this whole thing right now. I'll add some other color in later on as we go along, but I want this to be nice and dark. We want his head to stick out a little bit. right underneath and underneath the mouth is going to be shadowed here so we want a little more there and now I'm just using the tip as you can see I can get some pretty nice points thin lines with this I've got other pens or brushes if I want to make real thin lines but for this one we're doing him sort of cartoony and just having fun with him so I'm not worried about making real thin lines he's not supposed to look super realistic just sort of fun there we go now we're sort of getting there now while I let that dry I'm going to do a little bit down here at the bottom you can see I'm using almost the side of my brush, making a nice thick stroke. And this leg, we'll do this whole leg here, make sure this is nice and dark because he's going to have some shadow. This back part's going to be a little darker. 
This is where the shadow is going to be hitting it. I went outside the line a little bit, and that's okay. Um, I like to draw, when I'm painting, I like to go with the way the fur moves. So if I have any streaks, it'll coincide with the way the fur would look on the animal anyway. I don't want to go sideways. If I go sideways, you know, fur doesn't go sideways. Fur goes up or at different angles. Right, right up here, it goes at an angle this way. So you can see, if I do, and the fur on the top sticks up this way, I can even have some sticking over my lines. That makes it look a little more realistic. Try to make your fur go in the direction that the fur would do. And it, look at a look at photographs of otters and other animals, and that'll give you the idea of the direction of their fur. Always try to do those lines in the direction of their fur or their feathers to give you that look. A little more realistic look. There we go. More paint, a little more water. Now, I'm going to leave this up here because that's where the light's going to hit it. So it's going to be lighter here and darker here. So I'm going to put this in and I can streak this a little bit, give it that look of fur. You're not scrubbing with your brush too. Remember, your brush isn't a broom. You're using it as a paintbrush. So don't scrub with it. It's a little darker up here. And I'll put a little in his ear, top part of his ear. Now, that's a little too dark for me, so I'm going to take my paper towel and just dab the ear and pull out some of that and go a little lighter. a little darker down here. Now I'm just using the tip of my brush, making some nice lines, making a little more streak. Let's put down here. Now I let this dry a little bit so it doesn't just bleed in, and that way I can get some darker color. So that's why I'm going to different spots, giving those spots time to dry so I can start building the shadows. And you can see, just doing a little bit of fur here and there. I can come over here, start building some of the shadows. A little darker down here. You can see how it bleeds there, so that's why I always let it dry 
to make those second coats. And every time you do it, it's a little dry when it dries it makes your watercolor a little darker as you go over it the next time a little more water on my brush so I'm gonna let that dry before I add more cuz I want to have some different So this side's going to be a lot lighter, and you can see now mostly all I have on my brush is water, and I'm just moving that watercolor around to get the color I want. I want it real light over here, so I don't have much paint, and on the other side I want it nice and dark. I can blend these two, and this is the nice thing about watercolor too. If I want to blend it a little more, I can pull some of that watercolor that's up there down here. Blending that in like so. And that'll keep this other side light. So I'm going to let that dry. As I'm letting that part dry, I'm going to come over to this other side and work over here. There we go. This is the bottom part that's going to have a lot more of the shadow. I'm going to put those shadows in right around the bottom part of that paw, make it look round. I'll leave that top part light, put a little more over on this side, make it a little darker. And while that's drying, I can add a little more down here. So that's why I work in different areas. Give one spot a chance to dry while the other spot I work on. Now I can start putting in some more in the toes here. This part's going to be shadowed. So I'll put my first layer right down there. There we go. Put a little right in here. That gives us that shadow. And we want the shadow on this side of these toes, so we'll put these lines right here. And while we're letting all those dry, we'll hit the tail. So I'm going to put some right in the tail here. And here again, this is going to be the shadowed side. So I'll put this on and I'll let that dry and work on one of the other spots while that's drying. And since this is fur right here, I want my streaks, if I'm going to do any streaks, I want those streaks to go in line with my tail because that's the way the fur would go on this otter's tail. I can put those in when these dry, once I put another coat on, it'll make those darker and the others lighter. Watch how that happens. It's really neat. All right, let's put a little more up here. Now I can start on the inside part of the arm. A little bit of water, a little paint. Throw some on here. I don't want that to get too dark because I want this part to stick out. So there we go. We're almost to where we're going to start another color. little bit of water. I'm brushing the water off on my brush here and just gonna soften this. Clean that a little bit, soften that. a little bit of a different color here. It's nice to have a 
piece of paper you can test your color on also. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to pick that side. I'm going to put a little bit of this. I'm going to mix a couple of my browns and my brownish yellow here together. And yeah, it looks like a nice color. A little too dark. So I'm going to put a little water on that. That looks pretty good. Now you can see I've got a lot more water here because I want this real soft. I don't want a lot of paint here. I want more of my my paper showing. Just a little bit of the paint and a lot more of the water. I don't want it so far it's going to drip though. Don't want it to drip down off my picture. Let me get up here face. I'm going to stop right there at the bottom of his face. Continue it on down here. And I'll put that in. This is the shadow part, so this part's going to be a little darker than the top. And I'm going to push that color up. As you see, I'm going to have this, my brush is going to be a little drier. And I'm going to push this color up. And gravity is going to pull it back down. And it's going to soften it a bit. So we'll pull that up. Gravity do its job. blend it in with my other brown. And if you don't want your otter to be brown, you can make your otter blue, green, whatever color you want to do it. This is your otter. This is your painting. So you make your painting the way you want it. In fact, I like this color in with my other brown as well, so I'm going to mix some of that in with my other brown as it's drying. And you can see I'm working from the bottom up, just keeping things soft. Now, I'm going to take some of that brown, and you might find yourself mixing other colors and play around with paper and your watercolors. You, you'll find all kinds of ways to mix your colors and get different variations of browns and blues and greens. And I hardly ever use black. I usually use a brown and a blue when I mix them together, and it creates more of a realistic dark, you know, black type color. Yeah, see I'm mixing some of that lighter brown that I've been using, mixing it in with the brown that we started with. And that's giving me a whole new color and I really like that color. Gives sort of a cinnamon color to the otter. Otters have different phases and their colors can be different depending on where they are. Just like we can all be different. Now I talk to sound like Bob Ross, who we love. Put this down here, I'll make happy feet. That's a Bob Ross kind of thing. Happy feet. On me of course it's stinky feet, but uh, for otters, I guess it'd be happy feet. There we are. Take some 
more of that yellow, brown, ochre color. Put it up here into his arm. I'm just putting it over everything in there because I really like that color added to it. Just gives it a little more, a little more punch, a little more woof, a little more pizzazz. Now you don't want to use too much paint because if you use too much paint it's going to actually muddy up your picture. So you really, the reason you're using, it's called watercolor is because you're using a lot of water with this. And you can experiment before you paint. You might want to experiment with a piece of paper um, because sometimes you use too much paint and sometimes you use too much water. And, and some of that is just sort of finding your happy medium, what works for you. That's what I had to do. I had to just sort of experiment. I think all artists do. I think all art is an experiment. Every time you do a picture, you get a little better and a little better. When people ask me, how long did it take me to do this? I say 55 years. Because it's taken me about 55 years to learn how to paint and do things. So. Every picture, you just build on from the last picture you did before and learn a little bit more here and a little bit more there. And before you know it, you got stuff going. I should move. There. I moved my hat. I hope my hat hasn't been blocking any of this. Ken will let me know. Hope you guys are having fun with this. I'm sure having fun. I'll put a little bit of the lighter brown over on this side. A little up in his ear. There we go. He's starting to really take shape now, huh? Another thing you can do is keep a hair dryer with you. If you need to dry something fast, if you have a hair dryer, you can blow things dry and uh, move on a little quicker. I'm not in that much of a rush, so I don't have it with me, but I have a hair dryer in my art box. So if I need to do things fast, I can. There we go. Now, while this is all drying down here below, some of that. I got a little too much paint there. There we are. Add a little brown. Back to my original brown. Add some right in here. Make this a little darker. darker on the underside over here as well. That's too much paint. Rub it off on my paper towel. Just use what I have here. Now it's still just a little too much paint so I can blot it out.
All right, now I can mix some of that brown with the yellowish brown that I have here. And start creating some lines. You can do this if you want, or not. I'm just sort of creating some lines to give us the idea of the fur. And his fur is coming down here. And you can see how thin I can get the strokes just from uh, this one paintbrush. A lot of times I might have a number of paintbrushes that I'm using, but right now this one pretty much does just what it needs to. There we go. That just gives us a little, little hint to where the fur is. I'm going to do it on this side as well. Fur is going to be curling down. Just a little bit. And you can have as much fun with this as you want. I could spend all day playing around with these pictures, and a lot of times I do. Let's put some in here. It's first coming down here. Now make it a little darker now. Now I'm going to bring mix a little blue with my brown and that blue is going to make this brown just a little darker. I'm not going to add too much of my blue but watch what happens when I mix some of my blue with my brown here. clean out my blue here. I don't want to get it all mixed up into my my blues. There we go. Now I can use this. I use a little piece of paper to get too, some of the paint off so that I don't have too much on there. Now watch this. Look how much darker that is. That'll give me some brush strokes in this area. Gives it sort of a gray. Now we're getting a little more body to him. Maybe a little more blue. With my brown. Make a streak on that paper. And I can get this. those streaks come down. And we're going to make his arm just a little darker in a few minutes. Once this all dries, I'm going to make his arm darker so it sticks out. Now that's a little too dark, so I'm going to blot some of that out with my go. And a little bit of uh, on this side here. This is the shadowed side so that fur is going to be a little darker. Oh, 
Hope you guys are having fun. All right, let's put some. Now I'm back to just my brown. I'm gonna put some of that brown right through here. There we go. And you can see as you start running out, I'm gonna put just little light streaks of it here in the middle in the light in this area, the lighter area of its belly. Give that fur look. Brown alongside. And then as it lightens, I can put some of those streaks right here in the middle. And I can build on top of some of them when they dry. And so some of them will be a little darker. Some will be a little lighter. Oops, way too dark. Watch that out. That's why it's always nice to have that extra piece of paper to check how dark things are. I got a little little piece of something there. Get that out. And you can see I'm working real light with my brush. I don't want to push down hard. The softer I push, the thinner my strokes are. He's definitely getting fuzzy. Well, let's take a little bit of my gray that I created with my brown and blue. Put some in the tail here. Here again, like I said, I mix a brown and a blue together. My darker blue with one of my darker browns. And it gives us sort of a nice gray, almost a black. Like I said, I hardly ever use black. There we go, we'll let that dry. Now, I'm going to put a little more of that on this arm right here, because I want that arm to be a little darker so we really see it. And a nice shadow there.
And I think I'm going to block that out because you know what? I'm actually going to darken it underneath it. That's the nice thing about watercolor. If I want to change that, I can blot that out. I'm going to make the dark back here. Be real careful around his arm. And I'm going to push that arm up with light instead of making him darker there. There we go. We're going to make this back really dark. Now I can't just have it dark right there. So I'm going to mix some more of my brown and my blue. there. There we are. And I'm going to pull some of that dark up here as well. Actually, I accidentally blocked in some of my green. Let's try that again. green in there. Just want my blue and my brown. There we go. That's more like it. So I'm just using, I'm flattening out my brush. Just using the side. come down. This part of his arm is going to be a little darker. A little more dark on this side to make that on pop. Take some water and push that up. All right, we're getting there. Now we're going to take some of that dark and we're going to bring it down here in some of our darkest areas. side. And I'm just putting little spots here and there just so that we know what parts are shadowed. And if you get to a point where you're like, boy, that's enough, I'm going to stop it then by all means you do that. You know where you're painting. It's your painting. You look at it and you're the master of your ship. You decide where you're going to start and stop and how much you want to put in. You might not want to put any of these uh, furry brush strokes in. I'm sort of a pin and feather guy as my buddy John Phelps tells me. Down there. 
let's put some more on the tail here right down below this is where it's going to be darkest on this side a little bit up at the top a little bit down at the bottom of the feet here too Yeah, we're going to take some of that and we're going to put it on his nose. We want him to have a nice dark nose. So I'm going to put a little down below. This is going to be the darkest part. Now I'm going to let that dry while I'm still putting some of the dark in these other ears. And you can see the more strokes you do, the more it builds and blends your colors and it gives you more of that three-dimensional look to it. And you can keep building and building on top of colors. That's the fun thing about watercolor. You can just slowly build Slowly build. Put a little on the side. And block that one out. There's too much in that side. If it looks too dark in an area, just take it out with a little bit of water. back of this tail. Let's bring some more brown in there. Brush that off. Let's do just like we did before. I'm going to pull some of that brown up. A little water. Otters have some of the most dense fur. I have heard, I'm not sure about this, but I have heard that they have hundreds of thousands per square inch. I'm going to have to check on that. Probably shouldn't have said it until I knew, but I've already said it. It's out there. Can't all be like, hey, I can delete it. good here. Now, I'm going to let some of that dry. I might put a little more down there, but what I want to do here is up in the face, right up in this area, I want to create a little, I want to keep it really light, so I'm just going to put a little bit of, of um, color in there, more of a yellowy color, just a little bit, just to Give a little color, but I want to keep it more. It's under that yellowy brown. Just a little bit. I don't want it stark white. And I'm going to put just a smidge of this dark just underneath the eye. And right over the eye. To 
give us that shadow because his eye is going to be set in. And I can put a little bit up on top too. This is where you might normally use a smaller brush, but this brush seems to be working pretty good. I'm going to try to move back. I hope you guys can see all this. Make that just a little darker up there. There we go. Dark, darkening it up around those eyes is going to help make them pop. Alright, now we can go back to his nose. We want to put a little more of that blue and brown mixed together on his nose, but I don't want to put a lot. Now we've got the dark area. I'm going to put some over the whole nose and it's going to darken those. But it's going to keep that a little lighter. Now I'm going to take, I don't want that that dark. So I'm going to take a little paper towel, make sure it's a clean part, and just put it right on the nose. And that makes it gray again. And while that's drying, I'm going to take just a little bit of red, a little bit, teeny weeny bit, and put it mostly with water so it's pinkish. And I just want to put a little bit of that in his ear. A little pink color to the ear. And I'm going to go back in to that nose. Give that nose a little darker. And a little darker on top. And I'm going to put a little of this underneath in his mouth. Because that mouth is going to have a shadow. That shadow is right there. Okay, that was a little darker. I'll let that dry and that's about all we have to do. I'm going to put a little more shadow here while I'm letting the top of the nose dry. Maybe a little more brown on the tail while we're waiting. So you can see how much thicker that is. So I'm going to have to put a little water on that because that's way too thick. Clean off my brush and I'm just going to pull some of that paint because you want, like I said, you want it to be more of a watercolor as opposed to thick paint. We're not doing a, an acrylic or an oil here. Now while I'm still letting that top dry, one thing we need to do is give a little bit of a shadow down here. Now you could just put a shadow, you could put some grass down below him, you could put him on a rock, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to give him a little shadow. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my brown. You can see I'm just putting it right there he'd be, right under, right around him. Now you're not going to see the shadow right at the bottom here because his foot's right down, but you want to have, you can see around his body, there'd be a shadow here. That just grounds him. You want your critter connected to your paper. see a little bit under those toes right there. Maybe a little more right here where that tail is, you'd be able to see 
the shadow from that tail. Now I've just got looks like a little bit of paint that dripped there. I can clean that off with a little water and then I just dab it. And that clean that out. Nice. Put a little more shadow over here by the back of him coming down. Over this way. Now right under his toes, right where he meets up with the ground, I'm going to have the heaviest shadows right there. And then the shadow gets lighter and lighter as it moves out. That gives us the impression he's really touching that paper. There we go. Do the same thing right here, right down there. That shadow's going to be pretty dark. There we go. Bring that shadow up a little bit more and back over here. That looks pretty good. Alright, let's get the nose finished up and call it a day. Let me mix my blue and my brown again here. That looks good. I'm going to put just a little bit underneath his nose right there. A little towards the top and the bottom here. I'm going to put a little of this around his eye again. I want to darken that eye just a smidge more. We're almost there, guys. I'm so excited. I always love seeing the ends of these. Sort of sad when they're ending too, though, because I love to paint. I could just paint all day. So I'm going to put a little more up at the top just to focus your eyes up here. And you could do this around the whole thing if you wanted to put a little darker. Now it makes that head pop a little bit. Now, we have to, oh, we have to put whiskers OMG, how can I ever get to put the whiskers in a little critter? So, now the whiskers, when you do a whisker, I'll show you on this, you're going to take a little bit of your darker color and you want to get most of your paint off and you're just going to just wick it over just like this in one quick stroke, just like that. Don't push down hard. You can see how soft I'm pushing. You might want to practice on another piece. That might be a good idea. And I'm going to put my paint down because I need both hands. And then I'm going to turn them sideways so I can make those whiskers. So I'm going to make a whisker come here and there. With a nice stroke. I'm going to come over this side. Need one more paint. some of these a little darker. They even have a couple whiskers up by the eyes. That one might be a little too high. A couple down over here. Some down here. Now one thing I want to do, we don't want to leave the eyes bright, bright, bright like that. So we're just going to take a little, little bit of blue. Never so light and make sure you have most of it out. And we're going to take a little blue. And we're going to put that little blue right down here. I'll 
here, right down under the eye. Well, we finished our painting, and uh, I hope you guys had a great time. I sure did. Uh, so, it, and one of the reasons I love to paint and draw is it's another way for me to express my love of nature. And so get outside and enjoy art in nature. It's a great thing to do. We are very blessed to have such a beautiful place to live and such a beautiful planet. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you soon with more of our art in nature at Allwood. Thanks much. Bye.